Um, before we open up for a panel discussion, maybe I can just spend a couple of minutes just to uh, uh, summarize uh, the two previous speakers and also perhaps set a little bit of some sort of paradigm so that you'll help with our discussion. Could we have the uh, next uh, set of slides? Okay, so, um, so this is something you've seen before. Hendrik showed you uh, this data on his first slide, and you can see that this was a, a survey that essentially was done in the US and asked patients about the experience of their pain. And uh, the first one was done by Carol Warfield back in 1993, and about uh, uh, seven, eight years later, that Jeff Applebaugh uh, and myself repeated it using, a, again, a very similar uh, survey and methodology. And within the last uh, six months or so, we basically repeated the same survey. And really, just to illustrate that, you can see that over the years, about 20, 30 years uh, uh, from 1993, there is still really not that much has changed as far as uh, pain control. And I think more alarmingly, about 30% of our patients describe their pain as either severe or extreme after surgery. And this is where I think we really have much room for improvement. And as you, uh, one of the questions that we ask these patients is that just tell us about your side effects after surgery. And this is what they tell us. And if you go through the list, 80% of our patients had some sort of side effects after surgery. Drowsiness, constipation, nausea, dizziness, itching, con uh, confusion, mood changes, sleepiness, vomiting, difficulty urination, <laughs> respiratory depression. And you begin to see a little theme of all these side effects potentially could be attributed to opiate-related related, uh, side effects. And again, we have studies show that increasingly we do a lot of surgery in an ambulatory basis, and about 40% of our patients came back because of in under control pain, poor management of pain, the largest single factor of all the readmissions following ambulatory procedures. And Hendrik talked about chronic pain. Again, it is increasingly being recognized that acute pain often can lead to chronic pain, more so in some of the major surgery, thoracotomy, uh, amputation, but even in smaller procedures, hernia repair, there is certainly an incidence of chronic pain uh, following even smaller procedures. Now, the problem, I think, is because our paradigm in terms of pain management, the traditional paradigm has been that, you know, when you have mild pain, you give them some opioids, and if you have more moderate pain, what you do, you give them more opioids, and if you have severe pain, what do you do? You give them even more opioids. And that has been the traditional approach, and we now know that that is an ineffective approach, and that is an approach that causes problems in terms of side effects and poor pain management. And I think what we need to think about is, is changing our paradigm from this over here on the left, where you give weak opioids and more opioids and even more opioids, to setting a slightly different foundation. So initially, perhaps, you can treat mild and moderate pain without opioids. Start out with acinaminophen, non-steroidal, gabapentinoids, local anesthetics, and then if you have more moderate or severe pain, think about ketamine, think about neural blocks, epidural, peripheral nerve block that Dr. Miller talked about, and perhaps using opioid as a breakthrough pain. And this is a change of paradigm, which I think uh, with the multimodal approach, as Henry talked about, using drugs that act on different receptor mechanisms to try to better enhance analgesia and better in preventing post-operative pain. And I'm going to, uh, in fact, stop there. And if you can have a light up a little bit, I'd like to invite, I think Dr. Fierson is going to come and uh, moderate our pain panel. And hopefully we will encourage you to come up and with some questions and make it an interactive session. Can we have uh, the lights up? Thank you.